Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Michael's Church here in Hamilton Mountain. I am the Reverend John Forbes. It's my honor to welcome you to worship again. It continues to sadden our heart that the Omicron variant has forced us to close the doors to our church once again, and yet our hearts are open. We continue to pray and to serve the community as best we can. Please be in touch with us if there are things that we can do for you. We begin today's worship with the Gospel of Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew in chapter 2, we begin with the first verse. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. But when Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared, and then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Well, this, my friends, is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Huh. Well, Merry Christmas, my friends. It is the eighth day of Christmas. That's eight maids a milking, if you're keeping count. I love that we get to keep Christmas going in our hearts and with our families. Keep that tree up for another little while longer, for the wise men don't get here for another four days. On January 6th, we'll feast again as the Epiphany is celebrated. Then we can settle down for a bit before Lent and Easter. I love how the church calendar keeps our minds focused on the biblical story and keeps our faith lives moving in a positive direction. Well, Epiphany, of course, has to do with appearance or manifestation. It is the day that the three gifts arrive at the manger for Jesus. Notice I didn't say three wise men. It is assumed that there was a wise man, a magi, for each of the gifts. In later centuries, the church would fill in a few of the details around these wise guys. But they aren't in the story. Casper, who wears a green cloak and a gold crown with green jewels on it, he's the king of Sheba. Gaspar represents frankincense, which is brought to Jesus. Melchior, who has long white hair and a white beard and wears a gold cloak, he is the king of Arabia. Melchior represents the gold brought to Jesus. Balthazar, who has a black beard and wears a purple cloak, He's the king of Tars in Egypt. Balthazar represents the gift of myrrh that was brought to Jesus. But we should stay focused on the gifts in the story. But let's be real, these are weird gifts for a baby. Audrey Jane, who is my new baby, never received anything like these gifts. But let's be mindful. 
Gold is, of course, affiliated with kings, and Christians believe that Jesus is the king of kings. Frankincense is used in worship in traditional churches and represents that people can worship and praise Jesus. Myrrh is a perfume that is embedded on dead bodies to make them smell pleasant and rep excuse me, represent that Jesus would endure death upon the cross. So maybe the gifts were more symbolic than practical. No diapers, no rattles or strollers. Remember that these magi had been to see Herod, the real king, and were honest with him about their purpose. They'd come to worship this newborn king. And so Herod calls together all his wisest people and asks them to tell him where is this newborn king at. They recall the scriptures, Micah chapter 5, which proclaims Bethlehem in Judea as the place to be. The story is one of the three which proclaim the appearance or manifestation of God's glory. The other is Jesus' baptism, which we'll hear about next week, and the wedding at Cana being the other. All are great stories and are not so ordinary as we might think. This is the time for us to get deep into the mission of the church, to reach out to all the people of the earth, and we mean all, with the great gift of God's grace. This means proclaiming the healing truth of the light of the world. Well, there are several traditions at this time of year that can help us get in touch with the Jesus story. One is the conclusion of Christmas on the twelfth night, a chance to sing those favorite carols one more time. That'll be Boney M and Wren Collective for me. I'm sure you've got your favorites to listen to while you put away the tree and decorations for another year. The other is also, well, it's one of my favorites, to take a piece of chalk and bless it right on the door frame of the house. This year, it'll look kind of like this. 20 plus C plus M plus B plus 22. It is the year bookending the names of the Magi, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. CMB is also the Latin initials for the phrase Christus mentionem benedicat. Probably butchered that. Christ, this house, we bless. Well, in other years, I would love to come and bless your house for you. We'll be a little careful this time around. Lest we forget that the birth of Christ and the bringing of gifts by Gentiles from the East is, well, just a story. Even though it's one that's meant to help us frame the life of Christ, we must remember the very real consequences of following Jesus. That in today's world, there are still places that it is unsafe to do so. When Herod realizes that he'd been tricked by the Magi, he is furious and gives orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem who were under two years of age. The Magi were right to listen to their dreams and go home in a different way. Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus receive a revelation from God through the angels to go to Egypt until Herod is dead and gone, proving the threat that kings can have on the followers of Jesus in this world. While Jesus is the Prince of Peace, not all kings wield their power in his way. Knowing all this, well, makes me mindful of the ways that I affect others and the power that others have over me in my day-to-day -day life. It is a question of vocation. Whom do you serve? And how do you serve others? It's something to consider as we move into a new year, a new season of life, a new stage of pandemic. Remember, the Magi are called wise because they inquired about the Christ child and that it is never too late to inquire about Jesus in your own life. And so may the Holy Spirit surround you this Christmas tide as we praise God for the life of Jesus going deeper into the spiritual life as a community of believers. We give thanks to God. Merry Christmas. Amen.